Okay, welcome to episode 13 of the Total Hockey Training Podcast. I am your host, Sean Scahan. And before I introduce my next guest, I just want to mention that I recently published my ebook, Total Hockey Training 2. It's a collection of articles and blog posts and thoughts that I've accumulated probably throughout the course of the last, I don't know, 20 years or so. And you can get it um, right in my bio here. And also, Total Hockey Training online training is going on. We're in season right now. Again, you can get it for free for seven days, and then it's $39 a month, and that is on Train Heroic. Let me get into our next guest. I'm lucky to have the founders and owners of Matterhorn Fit in the Florida area, Ryan Vesey and Sean Sullivan, and I'm just going to get right into it. Hey, guys, how are we doing? Doing right. good. Thanks for having us. Yeah. yeah, thanks for coming on. Um, yeah, if you guys wouldn't mind, I mean, this is a total hockey training podcast. I know, Ryan, you you had some time in the pros. Um, if you guys could just rap about, you know, your backgrounds and how you got to where you were and your why for Matterhorn Fit. Yeah. Sean, do you want to start? With yeah, I can go first there. So um, I guess I started playing sports like most people. Um, was obviously into hockey. I was fortunate enough to play hockey in college. Um Along the way, was fortunate enough to work and and be under the tutelage of some pretty high level trainers. Um, that's sort of what got me into this field. I also studied exercise science in school, so um, it was just a natural progression from sports to just really start with a training. I was remember being 13, 14 years old, getting into the training side of things and sort of being fascinated by different concepts and whatnot. And uh, sort of carried that through my hockey life, so to speak, and then uh, was fortunate enough to study in school and, and learn more and, and go on. And I guess, uh, I guess that's been 10, 15 years now. I'm fortunate enough to be training uh, hockey players still to this day. So I guess that would be my start. And yeah, that's, that's where, where it all started. Where are you from, Sean? Where'd you go? Uh, originally from, I'm from Worcester, Massachusetts. So okay. yeah. Yeah. So started up North and then uh, nice. obviously found my way down South. So good. Where'd you go to school? I went to the University of New England, um, okay. studied exercise science there. So they had pretty good program. There's a couple, couple of big guys that came out of there and, and went on to other schools. But uh, yeah, great, great program there, and um, took what I learned there and combined it with other stuff, and and here we are. So that's awesome. That's great. That's a good yeah. story. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Ryan, talk about your background. I know you. you yeah, did, I grew up. Yeah. Did some time with the Sharks, right? Yeah, brief brief time with the Sharks, but I uh, yeah I grew up in Long Island, New York. Uh, went to Cornell, uh, graduated there. Oh four, uh, as an undersized guy, was trying to make my way into the league. Uh, I had some stops in Europe on the way, so I started in Sweden right out of college. Uh, couldn't get in the American League that year, um, and then ended up coming back to the American Hockey League in Springfield. Uh, played played there for a year, and then signed. Uh, with Ottawa and kind of went back to Europe after that and then ended up getting some time with San Jose and then I finished my career in uh, in Russia Russia and Sweden and Switzerland and so all, all in all played 14 years professionally uh, I had a lot of injuries uh, throughout my career eight eight total surgeries and um, you know Matterhorn Fit was founded kind of just in the basis of Sean and I got together to try to extend my own career after my back and hip surgery and what wow. we did was I always had access to, you know, the top guys in all these different countries, just as a function of being a pro in these countries. Mm -hmm. And Sean and I started really taking some of the most advanced neurological techniques and started combining them into a cohesive process of rehab and training uh, to extend my own career. And when that worked and I was able to play five more years pain-free, uh, I retired in 2018 and Sean and I said, well, let's see if this could work for other people, people, and particularly uh, everyday individuals, you know, in the Florida area. And so wow. that's how we started Matterhorn. And we, uh, you know, we ended up having uh, just as a function of our backgrounds, we had a lot of professional uh, hockey players, uh, a lot of professional athletes were training with Sean, Sean, when he set up his, um, his gym in Florida, uh, he was training exclusively professional athletes. And so there were no, uh, we call sometimes call them civilians, no civilians in the gym. It was just the regular, uh, you know, pro guys. And 
uh, when I retired, we we wanted to see if this newfound process could work. And so that's how we we started Matter Arm Fit in 2018. Wow, that's that's really cool. Now, Sean, why Florida? What what brought you to Florida? What what uh what led you to that path starting? Yeah, it's funny. I mean, I'm sure Ryan could speak to this too, but it's it was one of those scenarios where a lot of guys were moving to this area. Um, it's the perfect scenario of people got players that are from Minnesota, Massachusetts, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Don't want to go back to there yeah. in the summer. They want to come here. If the season ends short, they can come here. It's immediately beautiful 75 degree weather. Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of a place that you vacation, so to speak. And mm -hmm. if you can live here in the off season and, and get good training and whatnot, then uh, why not live here? Right. So that's, that awesome. was, yeah. that's kind of how it started. The tax, the taxes were a big yeah. factor. Yeah. 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 As well, I could speak, uh, <laughs> You know, no, no state yep. income tax helps. And uh, a lot of guys rent their places out during the hockey season, which is the prime rental market. Right. In Florida. So you're able to, you know, it's a pretty good model for a player playing over in Europe or, you know, yeah. trying to, you know, make some money on their house or pay off their house while they're playing and then come back and have the place to live. So it was pretty, uh, it spread. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty neat. Yeah. So Ryan, did you hook up with Sean as a player in Florida yeah. then? Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So I was still playing. So after we put that process together, we didn't start the business till five years later. So I ended up playing for an additional five years after uh, we found we founded this process. And then, um, yeah. So I was working with him that whole That's time. That's awesome. Yeah. So could you talk about, I guess, the uniqueness of what you were doing to get back to being pain free and injury free? Yeah. I. I mean. The biggest thing is when I was dealing with all these practitioners who were, you know, quote unquote, the best in their country or whatever mm -hmm. field they were in, they all looked at pain, injury, and movement dysfunction from a neurological level. And so all their techniques always got me a little bit, you know, they got me better and they got me better faster than traditional methods, but they never got me all the way. And but they, it occurred to me essentially that the commonality between all these people, always the best people were looking at the body this way and, and injuries this way. So we started taking their techniques and combining them into a systematic process. These are people from Switzerland, uh, guys from that I worked with in Croatia. Sean has a very neurological approach to strength training. And it was just a very natural fit to take these different techniques and systematize them into an order of operations and a process that takes someone from uh, when they're injured or in pain all the way through performance, right? And there's no gap uh, in, in that process. It's a closed loop of information. And so um, that's kind of how we founded our process when, when I was injured. That's pretty neat. And so, Sean, you've been doing this before you met Ryan, I imagine, correctly. Or, or did, you guys, did you guys collaborate, I guess, I start. I started here on my own. Um, okay. Obviously, when Ryan was still playing, and had a handful of guys um, that moved down here with maybe ten guys. Then the next summer, it was fifteen guys, and then it yeah. just kept kind of piling up for through word of mouth. I wasn't initially when it was just me here. I wasn't advertising. There was no mm -hmm. sign on the door, so it was just if you get results, they would tell other guys, and uh, it grew kind of organically like that. So that's yeah, great. that was that was the starting point, and I felt like that was the that was how I needed to start. I needed to earn these guys trust. And it's a non-traditional system that I kind of run too. So you need to be, it, I just felt like I needed to grow it that way and, and and get the trust first. And then the rest would follow, so to speak. Yeah. I love that. What's cool about Sean too, is when he started, you know, as you know, you get me with your experience in, in the NHL and dealing with pro guys, like most general, you know, trainers, they wait for that one day when the pro guy comes in through their doors and, you know, they'll market that guy, you know, yeah. like today, Trey, right. Sean was, was the opposite. He, yeah, only right. had, he had no regular. Right. Yeah. Which was good, which was yeah. good too. Cause it was pressure. Not that anything isn't pressure, but it was immediate pressure to, okay, I got to earn the trust. I need to perform. I need to be dialed in. It, it, it was no, that's all I knew. And it, yeah. if, and if you can focus on those guys, then, seemingly everything else would get a little bit easier so to speak i don't Absolutely. know if it's entirely true but at least you think that in your head right so it was yeah, a good place think, to start i think hockey players in general as you guys can attest to like they just want a place to go and train and, and probably in florida go get their routine of going to train 
going to golf, you know, having dinner with their family and then start skating when they have to start skating and they want to have that routine in place. And when you have that trust and respect and um, belief system in place, I think that can go a long way. Right. For sure. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, so talk about then. So do you, obviously you guys must assess when you first have an athlete in your door and is that how it goes? Is that how, is there an assessment that takes place and are they put into the system with um, a roadmap in place? Yeah. So every, everyone who comes in the door, whether they're healthy or uh, currently injured or rehabbing or something goes through the same assessment process where we identify exactly where the brain and muscles aren't communicating. And then we figure out where those breakdowns are. And we, if they are, if there are those breakdowns we correct them first before we do anything on the training side so we make sure that there's no compensation there so that everyone starts with a clean foundation and in doing so we're able to really tailor the program pretty effectively uh, to for results because we have this underlying understanding of everything that we corrected in the to begin with and how to prevent it from coming back and so when we by the time our clients get to sean from our therapists they have Sean has a full kind of overview and profile and breakdown of these clients so that he can program effectively for not only the compensation, but where they're trying to get through, you know, on a, on a performance level, right. What they're trying That's to awesome. improve, where they're trying to, that always develops and progresses over time based on um, muscle imbalances and things like that. As, as we see when, when they end, end up getting to Sean and you can really kind of things start glaring out, you know, start showing up to him that, Yeah, I think I think our testing in terms of like traditional strength training testing is completely different, right? Like you don't really run, especially especially with hockey players, like you have the combine and you have the testing, Mm -hmm. so to speak. But we know how if we go if they go through the right protocols, we know what they're going to come back like, presumably, given the demands of the sport, et cetera, et cetera. So that really just becomes fine tuning. And then then their program takes off. Right. So making sure we make the initial assessment is huge, but in terms of strength and things like that, like we don't really focus so much on that because we have to get to those places anyway. So Mm -hmm. we really don't want to waste much time doing the traditional testing, um, knowing that they're someone stronger in you know, a summer, if they're not getting stronger, something's wrong. Then there's everyone starts at their weakest point, no matter what coming. Exactly. Exactly. Right. So it's, you know, yeah, yeah, do you do different. you guys see a lot of commonalities when your guys come back from their seasons? Do you see oh, yeah. a lot of like say oh, yeah. I guess streamlined situations where like you see a lot of the same issues? Like talk about that. Like what do you see with players who come back after a long season, even if it's, you know, after a a regular season with no playoffs and a regular season with four rounds of playoffs? It's funny cuz like that time of year is when our snowbirds so to speak are just they've been with us for four or five months and these guys Mm -hmm. are just coming back and it's really funny because a lot of these people who have never really strength trains before are doing unique exercises and they come back and they say oh i I bet the hockey guys can do so much more weight and it's not entirely true like when they first come back they're so broken down and you Mm -hmm. have to start so so basic in a way i guess basic Mm -hmm. is relative but you have to be so dialed in with where you're starting with the ankle, with the knee, with, with everything that we know, hip imbalances, anterior pelvic tilt, all the, all the buzzwords, so to speak, but it's true. It's those mm-hmm. guys come back and they're Lord more lordotic than they were when they left, et cetera, et cetera. So it's things like that, 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 that we really have to hone in on early and often. And then, then you can start progressing, but there's no, the first couple of weeks of them being back are certainly not, uh, not something right. you would put on Instagram or whatever in no, terms yeah. of special, <laughs> special stuff. So it's right. Just hammering no, I think that's neat because th- there's a, it's such a long season and you know, yeah. It, it, for myself being the strength and conditioning coach for the team, I was with them throughout the season and you're trying to, you're trying to just delay the breakdown of what they accomplished during their off seasons the, the best that you can and the longer that season goes the harder that is and so yeah like they're coming back to you guys it's it's time to build them back up and get them going right exactly exactly that's right no oh, that's awesome so talk about if you could like talk about like 
if you get into like what is different from what your therapist may do from your traditional physical therapist, if you yeah. could. Yeah, yeah. So like really at its core, it's it's the way we think and the way we prioritize um, the neurological stuff versus the symptoms. And so we always don't do anything until we clear the neurological foundation. And so okay. making sure that everything works as it should, the brain is communicating with the body as it should. And oftentimes when the, the brain and body aren't communicating as it should, the, the incorrect parts of the body have to absorb the force of movement because the correct parts of the body are not doing their job. Mm -hmm. When that happens, too much force goes to a certain area. Those people either get a strain or a tear in that area or their brain feels threatened and keeps them in a, a, a constant protective mechanism by sending a pain signal in there. So many of our clients will get stuck with chronic pain. And when you look at imaging, many people think that they associate a direct correlation with the image as the symptoms. And what we're finding over and over and over again is it's not always the case because some of the symptoms that they're feeling could be from a neurological imbalance and some of it could be from a structural imbalance. Like when we have a lot of older people with bone on bone in the knee, mm -hmm. The doctor looks at that, they have the MRI image and the x-ray image, and they're looking at it and they're saying, you know, this is, this needs a knee replacement. And then someone will come to matter on that same person and we'll figure out that they're at eight out of 10 pain. They can't do things. And six points of that eight points are from neurological symptoms and only two points are from the structural. And mm -hmm. so we can get them out of that by clearing, getting the right muscles to absorb the force of movement, therefore not getting the response creating a little space in certain areas that are being compressed. And so when our therapists look at the body, just to come back to it, it's basically they, they really are trying to identify that first before they are looking at anything else. And when they do that, the symptoms and the change happens very quickly. That's neat. So I guess it's um, a little, uh, probably a lot more complicated than simply strengthening the synergist and the antagonist and agonist and all that kind of stuff. Right. Yeah. And we, you know, we, we do look at that as well. Yeah. Um, you know, that that's definitely when, when, you know, one, one side of the muscles should be at length, the other one's contracted. Right. And right. vice versa. And the co-contraction does happen. We do see that um, a lot of that can be fixed by fixing the neurological system. Um, because when the brain goes into a protective mode, it starts co-contracting because it doesn't know how to fire and release and, re and get muscles back to length as it should. And so doing that corrects kind of those imbalances, also corrects restricted range of motion, corrects flexibility. So within two weeks, we're seeing all of those uh, improvements. And a lot of people are like, until they go through it, they're like, well, that can't be, you can't get more flexible in two weeks. You're actually not getting more flexible. You're just removing the guarding mechanism from the brain mm -hmm. that is causing you to be restricted, you know? Mm -hmm. And so- that's that's kind of how uh, we look at it, but yeah, absolutely. Though it, it's definitely a little more uh, in depth process, but that's that's the matter of method and kind of how we how we approach it. That's awesome. Yeah. And so, talk about um, talk about your business model. Like you have, I know you have two franchises down there, Naples, and what was the other city? Uh, Benita Springs. So it's pretty close by. It's in. It's okay. in the same Those are our corporate locations. Um, we just launched our franchise system two weeks ago. Um, we're taking inquiries now and going through wow. the process with a number of candidates to open up in various areas of Florida as well as outside. But um, yeah, the business model um, is is this you know fully integrated rehabilitation and performance. Um, so the client comes in, they have pain. We spend about two weeks on average fixing that pain and correcting those imbalances. And then we build a personalized movement plan to prevent it from coming back, number one, and then two, to enhance their performance. And so uh, many clients stay and end up training all year round because they've seen the benefit, they enjoy the experience. We have a pretty uh, unique culture where we make all these uh, in individuals who are never part of professional athlete feel like a pro. Mm -hmm. You know, when they come to Matterhorn, they, they're, they, they feel like an athlete again. Um, and so, there's a, a certain stickiness to how we do things and how we communicate and um, just the overall level. But, you know, it's a, it's a twofold process of that pain relief and then training on the, on the business model side. That's awesome. So you have members, our clients, 
Yeah. Uh, and, they, and they can also go in there if they want to get a workout in, correct? And you, I assume you guys do conditioning and, um, you know. Yeah, everything is, everything is one-on-one. Mostly, uh, obviously in the summer, hockey guys, we could be three to one, but mm -hmm. it's all one-on-one -on -one training. So that's great. Yeah, it's great. awesome. It's great. Yeah, yeah. Um, what about the um the hockey culture there in your area what what is that like is it do you see more kids playing the game is there there are youth programs around i mean are you guys naples is that east or west the west coast of florida west coast part so you got a lot of tampa bay lightning fans on that part and yeah, uh, so we're like we sit in between uh the, the panthers and the lightning we're like two hours okay you know, is, that, is that near that? the everglades Sorry, right, so my, yeah, so we're, my we're, geography is kind of off. I've only been to, I've obviously, I've obviously got to get you down here. Sunrise in Tampa, but <laughs> not in between. Yeah, there's, yeah, nothing, there's between. nothing in between. Nothing in between. <laughs> but yeah, there's a road called Alligator Alley. Right. You've heard of that, and that connects our the the west coast of Florida to the east coast of Florida. You know, in in the south. But um, yeah, no hockey's growing down here. I mean, we've had. Uh, just even come through our facilities. We've had a ton of guys commit division one, and these are kids from Florida. Yeah. Uh, we had two um, second round picks, uh, Seamus Casey. He's at Michigan. Mm -hmm. Gavin Brindley also at Michigan. Um, Seamus went two years ago. Gavin went last year in the second round. Um, yeah. So, it, I mean, it's growing. And like Sean said, a lot of the pros come back here and on the youth level, now that you have these, florida homegrown players mm -hmm. uh, i have an eight-year-old son and he looks awesome. up to gavin and seamus you know yeah. like you know they all the kids want to be like those two you yeah. know and that's so, awesome it's huge too because like we don't i mean i get we're all from the northeast and whatnot but these kids don't really understand college hockey there's no right. one in this area so now that they can actually relate to kids that have gone through that path it's like it yeah. gives you perspective it's one thing to see the pros and Obviously, when you're 13, 14, you're in awe of them. And but you know that's a ways away. But when you see sure. 17, 18 year old kids that are not too far removed yeah. from the teams that you were or they were playing for, it definitely yeah. gives them them something to drive for, which is obviously the only, the only problem is everybody wants to go to Michigan now. And it's uh <laughs> it's a very tough yeah. place to you know, yeah. very selective. You know, every kid wants to play in Michigan. So right. No, that's um that reminds me of you know when I worked in Anaheim, the junior ducks were starting to see you know kids get drafted out of their system there like um cam york is with the flyers now like and then seeing those young kids see those kids move on craig johnson's son was also drafted by buffalo but like california wasn't your traditional hockey market um yeah. i think gretzky had a lot to do with that when he played for the kings and it, it grew from there and yeah it's good to see you know the success of tampa and the panthers you know, grow in that market, which is great. It's good, good for kids to get interested in the game. And then to see kids like Seamus and, and Gavin there have success and, yeah. and you guys get to work with them. So, yeah. you know, that, that's gotta be a good feeling. Awesome. Yeah. Or like, yeah. 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 It's kind of uh Minnesota is just, you know, everyone plays hockey here. It's a little easier to a lot of pros come out of here, but when you see that these kids in us, in us, Place like Florida where hockey isn't yeah as big as it is in Minnesota. That's really cool. Yeah. And the Tampa area has done a great job. Like they, you yeah. know, they they produce a lot of players, like, you know, just even at the young seeing them at the young levels, because a lot of the lightning guys are involved in the community. Mm -hmm. And so now their kids are coming up. So the kids are getting, you know, a lot of ice time and good coaching. And really that's yeah, it doesn't that's really matter where you about. are. It's just right. If you can get on the ice and have good coaches and you love it. I mean, I think it's yeah. Yeah. Good recipe. Hundred percent. Awesome, guys. So tell us um how can our listeners find out more about you? I know Matterhornfit.com is your website, but any other avenues you guys um are, yeah. are any channels? Yeah, so Matt, you know, everything's at Matterhorn Fit on Instagram and, and Facebook. Um Matterhornfitfranchise.com is the uh website. If, if anyone is inquiring about uh, being a franchise partner and we run um, two very large events down at Hertz arena called the Matterhorn fit all IV showcase. Um, one of them is during the college coaches convention. And another one is in June for uh, this year. It's for 2011, 2010 to 2009 birth year players. 
And really that purpose is to influence and educate uh, the players on how to use hockey as a vehicle to get into the best school they can. And really that in our mind should be kind of the focus of a lot of kids when they're growing up is uh, try to make the NHL, you know, try to get to the highest levels possible, but also never forget about, you know, the rest of your life academics, you know, mm -hmm. being a fully rounded uh, athlete and, and person, yep. uh, you know, because as we all know, there's this, the percentage of making it to the NHL and making a career out of it, or even making enough money to that be your only career in life, you know, is, is very hard. And so we try to, you know, put some sanity back in the sport a little bit with the mm -hmm. parents and the, and the kids with that, with that event. And that's been, that's been fun. So that's all IV showcase.com. Is, is that what I think that's about? great. Cause actually just yesterday, the central scouting came up with their list and is, um, I don't know, a couple hundred kids on there. And as a, as a parent of one of those kids, it's like, you know, there's, a small chance that this is going to work out, you know, like this it's, and that's hard. It's hard, but you have to have a plan for life after hockey. And I think what you guys are doing by educating those kids at that showcase is pretty neat, especially with the Ivy leagues, you know? Yeah. No, thank Yeah. No, it's been, it's been great. And it's been, uh, I mean, I think it's been a little more, it's been surprising how welcoming it is and how many parents kind of appreciate that type of influence and messaging. Yeah. Uh, you know, we, we started it, we thought we were gonna have six teams and we ended up first year having 216 kids. And wow. you know, we've had the Slovakian national team playing it the last two years because their CEO of their, their ex CEO of their federation went to Harvard business school and was very academically focused. Yeah. You know, this was a great opportunity for their players. So, I mean, there's, it's just been, uh, it's been a whirlwind, but. That's oh. really cool. That's really cool. So you guys are not only doing the training, you're doing the mentoring a little bit too and helping that's awesome that's phenomenal guys well again i i don't want to take up too much of your time i'm gonna do you guys have anything else are you good you want to that was great no share? thank you awesome yeah. yeah well thanks guys it was great to meet you guys in person face to face and uh let's definitely collaborate in the future thanks for coming Absolutely. on Absolutely. Sure. thanks so thanks much thanks, thanks guys you. appreciate it you too yeah Bye.